you can see that the the earthen walls start to become bricked so yeah it does look like it's a mixture of both natural a natural cave and also you can see where there's nice you know bright walls that are you know plastered over and uh, over here to the to the left as you guys walk in you can see that there's a another hallway and it looks like some stairs that are going down um, and just out of the line the the sight of the torch you can see you can see that second bridge and that that other earthen column that's on the right side of this natural crevice interesting in fact let's get him curious So, so uh, I'm uh, looking down this hallway here, see, see if I can see more stuff. Now, is there water down in this thing? Cause... In the crevice, as you look into the this this fissure, it's actually pretty steep and it, it's pretty deep. It, it's about 20 feet deep. And at its widest point is about, about 10 foot wide. And it's got really, really rough walls but it looks like you can easily climb in and out of it, you know, and out of character. Probably you wouldn't even have to do any kind of ability check or anything like that. So, but it does look that you know if you do fall down into the into this crevice, you're obviously going to take a, a bunch of bludgeoning damage. You know, it's a d6 for every ten feet. So, but yeah, there 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 is a uh, a bunch of rubble on the bottom of it, and you know, this, it seems like this is where the cold is coming from. Is from the bottom of this crevice. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give me like a perception a check? Of air? Yeah, it's like a very slight draft. Why don't you give me a uh, give me a perception check as you're looking down into the crevice? Squall, bring the light up a little closer. I got a Nothic in here too. Squall's probably saying, "What in the hell's going on?" There's a Nothic in here. All right, so you look down into the, you look down into the. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, Wim out of nowhere says, "Human," like that, <laughs> out of nowhere. Uh, well, I haven't what? asked him yet. Devin, are you are you human or elf or what? <laughs> I'm quite actually, yes. Yeah, oh. but there's a there's a draft. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Down in the bottom of this of this cre uh, this crevice, you can see that there are some broken and gnawed bones. It looks like a like a Looks like as, as your you know your eyes are adjusting. It looks like it's uh, looks like there's a half-eaten body down there. Is that where the smell is coming from? That yeah yeah that's definitely as you guys kind of peer over you're like Whew, well, that's where that's coming from. But yeah, there's a there's a body down there, a corpse, half-eaten. You know you can see bones. The exposed. hair kind of goes up on Wim's neck, and he says, "We must be careful. There's some sort of." creature if there are bones down here. Alright, well, we're after red brands, not creatures. Uh, we've got some options, gentlemen. Uh, which way? Who else is looking down into the pit? If anybody else is looking down into the pit, you can give me a oh, perception check also. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm definitely gonna do that and uh, okay. look at the bones and see see what I can... Well, you can, like I was saying, you can, if you want to, Francis, like you can climb down into that crevice. You know, there's uh, going to be no check needed or, or anything like that. Yeah, I, I might, but I'll, I'll take it carefully, so I'll, I'll peer from my position here. I have a 20 foot climbing speed. I can go take a look. Well, let me, um, if I don't see any any kind of um, uh, dangers, I will climb down there as well. 
I've got um, a little bit of medicine training, so I'd like to look at the investigate the body. I think he's dead. I'm sure he's dead. <laughs> no check great. needed for that, Laddie. Yeah. I think he's dead. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Laddie. <laughs> sure. The smell is. Yeah, really I might be able to. Why would you want to go closer? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, I might be able to see how he died, and or if it's a he or a she or. It could be a or a human or, or well, what. It could be the wife of the woodcutter. Well, that's that's what I'd like to know, and I'll I'll start. Uh, I'll carefully. I'm trying to be quiet as well, but I'll uh, crawl down into the uh, uh, into the crevasse sure. there. Yeah, you're careful. You slide down a little bit, but you know you have enough you have enough uh, dexter- dexterity with about you that you're able to get down there pretty safe. And uh, the, the corpse is going to be right here, right about in this area here. And as you're as you're looking at the corpse, you notice that there is like a on his shirt, it's definitely a male. As you kind of, you kind of roll the body over, and when you roll the body over, wow, he, he really, really does stink. And you notice that he's been hacked up pretty good, definitely by weapons. You don't have to do any kind of medicine check to to ascertain that. Uh, and but but you also see on his shirt that there are a couple of axes that are crossed. With like a log. So what? What do you think? Yeah, is this? Uh, can I tell a human halfling? This definitely. Halfling? Yeah, you would probably you would guess pretty well that this is probably the woodworker, because you can you can see where he's got burns around his neck because remember he was hung in in town and displayed. So you right. can tell that he has these burn marks around his neck and that he was, he's was he got a bunch of puncture wounds and it looks like one of his arms has, all of the flesh has been gnawed off one of his arms and one of his legs as well. And uh, this is probably, I wouldn't know this, but I'm going to try to ascertain what kind of creature would have done this, at least the size of the creature. That sure. on his, you know, try to, yeah. try to look at the teeth and you, you look at the wounds and stuff, but uh, the piercing marks in his chest and stomach region, that's probably how he died, obviously, sure. because you've heard the story as well. But all of the, the flesh and stuff that has really been ripped off of his arms and his leg. Well, his arm and leg. And you can see that there's a lot of deep uh gouging or scoring of the bones. To where something that's been eating this this uh, woodworker has some pretty sharp teeth. Well, this is quite disturbing. Uh, anything else on the body? Um, why don't you, Why don't you give me a uh, give me another? Pers- uh, and, I'm sorry. Give me an investigation check, seeing that you're actually looking. Okay. You guys don't have to do. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. You guys don't have to do any rolls in the tower unless I actually ask you for them. So you guys can do all right. your rolls open. Stuff is it, like is you know. It if, okay, it, if I like to do it in the tower. Uh, if you want to do it in the tower, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Okay. But I was going to say you had a clutch roll. I mean, you rolled a, a 17 and three for 20. So yeah, as you're looking around, you don't find anything else on the body. The body's pretty much been stripped clean. Uh, but that's definitely the woodworker. You would definitely almost bet everything, bet the farm on it. And as you're looking around and you're standing up, all of a sudden a hole that's in the bottom of the crevice catches your eye. Something uh, of, uh, you know, uh, as the, the light of the torch and everything is kind of, you know, looking over the, the crevice and stuff, A glint, you get a catch of a glint of metal that's actually, and then there is a hole that's in this crevice at the very bottom, almost like it was put there to hide something. And you can see something kind of glinting in there. Hmm, what's this? I'll go ahead and uh, uh, yeah. look at it, and if I can't see, I'll, I'll kind of use my dagger and kind of poke, make sure nothing's going to bite me. Sure, yeah, and you I'll, take your dagger and up. you scrape away a bunch of the dirt because there's a bunch of dirt piled up in front of this hole also. 
and you find a, 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 a like an old battered wooden chest and it's hidden in this cubby hole and you're like wow this is pretty nice wow let's uh let's open it up shall we i'll i'll put my dagger uh you know and, and pry open the, the latch there and and uh and open it up sure you're, yeah you oh go ahead laddie so i was just gonna say you're spending a long time down there uh, do you do you recognize the the corpse Someone's watching us, gentlemen. Watching? Uh, I'm sorry, that was that was me. Is that rude? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not you. Yeah, so as you're digging what, this uh, this dirt away and you pull out this, this bad what, wooden uh, chest. What is it, then? What are your belongings here? Show yourself. Who are you talking to? I don't know. All right, we'll see. I'll, I'll open up the chest. Okay, so you open it up, and you know a couple of you are actually getting these. I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, you guys are watching chat, but sometimes I like to send private messages. So a couple of you are are getting uh, have been getting private messages actually. And as you open up this this broken chest, you notice that there's some coins in there. There's some silver, there's some gold, there's some gems, there's a couple of potions and a scroll in there. And as you're kind of digging around, there's also a a, a beautiful longsword in there too. All right, so did you kill this man? I'm typing, so uh, just because I'm not answering, I'm I'm typing in tells. Yeah, you... You are you are acting strangely, Francis. I mean, more than usual. No, no, I'm not. Just no. settle down, laddie. Stay alert. But, but, uh, all right, yeah. I've got weapon out, looking around. Yeah, he, he he tells you that in a in a tell he, in, in a. What, uh, uh, and this is a raspy that? voice. This, this this is a raspy voice that kind of sounds like this. Um, as, all as right, you're getting all those, right. Uh, messages. It's, it's your stuff, but the man, did you kill this man? All right. So I'll close the lid on the box, and um, and then I'll I'll climb up out of the crevice. Says uh, no. Yeah. Now, uh, on the on the sword also as you were putting it back into the into the box it had a name inscribed Talon T-A-L-O-N and you know on the hilt it's worked into the shape of like a bird with like spread wings alright well that, uh, that stuff there is uh, claims gentlemen I don't know I don't I don't think it's a red brand item. So, uh, and then from around the pillar, on. then from around the pillar, a creature appears. And this creature, let me show you guys really quick. I want to show you guys. <clears throat> I do have. I actually do have an image of this creature. As it peers around the corner, you can see one bright green eye. And he has spines on his back. And he appears from around the corner. And he just seems to be making gestures with his hands. Now, well, there's a handsome fellow. We'll leave your things. We're looking for other people here. Uh, Ooh. Are we supposed to kill it? <laughs> Do we roll initiative or what? No, no, laddie. Francis, I tell no. Laddie, it's, it's all right. As okay. long as uh, we're not here for him. He's told me he wants food, I believe. All right. Yeah, he's he, as he comes around the pillar, this natural earthen pillar. He does speak 
And he speaks in a tongue that possibly I don't think anybody understands. And he, you know, he's a he's a vile looking creature, that's for sure. And uh, can it, can I understand something. what language he's saying? He's speaking in. Uh, it it yeah. So it would be like you know, like I've said in the past, you can understand when someone's speaking Spanish or German. Yeah, it seems like he's speaking under common. Oh okay. So does anyone here speak under common? No. He just kind of tilts, and the big eyelid just kind of flashes a couple of times, and then he he gets down on his knees in front of you. He he comes up another five feet, and he and he walks up very gingerly. He doesn't seem like he's threatening or anything like that, and he takes a stick. Actually, he pulls out one of the roots from the natural earthen wall and he starts to draw in the dust and the sand that's on the floor and he draws a big smiley face <laughs> and and then he he draws another square with like a lid he doesn't draw a very good chest but you can tell that it's a chest and then he points at the smiley face and then he you know he you can see that he's actually smiling as well and then he points over towards the different entryways that are in this natural earthen cavern and then he draws like a stick figure like a stick figure and then he draws like a you can see that he's drawing like a weapon in their hands and then he draws what would be blood dripping off of it and then he draws another face and he and it's a it's a upside down so it's a frown face and then he he points to like the the stick figure with the the weapon and the blood dripping off of it and points to the the frown face and then he starts to point to all the different exits and then he shakes his head no So but, then, you, uh, but, but, but both to Squall and Frantisek, he's communicating with you telepathically, telling you that there are bad people here, and for you to be careful. Any right. kind of fresh food Tana that I have, I want to toss over tonight. to him. Thank you guys so much for all the bits tonight. I totally appreciate it. Thanks to the subs. Oh, he he loves it. And uh, he takes a, I guess you throw him, what, a ration or something like that? Yeah, uh, he's eating the package and everything, because I because he because he, he, you you see that he sniffs it, Squall, and then he just starts ripping through the you know the packaging, the wax paper, everything, and just starts eating it, and then he and then he holds out his hand like Do you have more, and also also as this is going on telepathically, he says to 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 both you and and Frantisek that this tastes so much better than the dead man that's down down in the bottom of the hole. <laughs> but he says, yes, yes, in a raspy voice, there are dead. There are lots of there are lots of people in here that are bad people. They will kill you, humans. Be careful and be wary. I ask him I guess telepathically, I try and attempt to communicate with him and ask him if he killed the man down in the bottom of the crevice. He says no. He, f in fact, he says that the the bad men threw him down into the bad into the bottom of the pit. And he also says that there was a woman and a child that were crying, trying to go down into the hole to get him, but the bad men took them away. Which direction did they take them? Uh, he turns around. Well, actually, he he actually gets a, a really good starting jump and jumps over to the other side of the crevice. Ah! It's like he, he jumped like an elk, man. And then he comes over here to this corridor, and he points down this hall. And then he communicates telepathically with, with the two of you and says they went that way. All right. <clears throat> very much. I throw in the rest of the rations that I have. Nice. Yeah, uh, take those off your sheet, and uh, he he thanks you, he, and then he jumps back over 
to the other side and starts pointing at the smiley face again. And in the, in any he, he thanks you for not not taking his treasure. And then he says if you he says he will he will give you sword if you kill all bad people and vacate them from his home. Okay. How many how many are there? Sounds good. He said lots. He says he he doesn't know but lots. Lots of ugly humans. Will you help us fight? No. He says no. Because he doesn't want them knowing that he's here. He stayed hidden the whole entire time. So the magic sword for clearing your house of bad guys. That is correct. Yeah, pretty much. That's what he says telepathically. And he can understand you when you're, you know, speaking to him. Well, you're speaking to yourself in your head, but he can understand you. And he says, yes, he will, he will give the sword if you vacate all of the bad people out of his home. Which way do you think we should start at? Or which way do you think we should go? Where would you go first? So I'll uncover uh, all of the different passageways for you guys. Here's one here in the lower right-hand corner. On the left-hand side, there are where the Nothic actually pointed to where the bad men uh, took the, the lady and the child. There are stairs descending down about 10 feet, and then you see that the hall goes to the right, and then you also see a door on the left-hand side right here. Now, as for the north, as you guys are kind of walking here up this way, I'm going to uncover the rest of this earthen cavern because of the, I'm sure the torch would have moved with you guys. So give me a second. That was all strangest mime show I ever seen. Isn't it going to be awesome when when we get dynamic lighting and line of sight and stuff with a uh, fantasy grounds? I mean, I can't. That'll wait. be cool. It's going to be so awesome. So you can see that there's a an opening up here uh, in the the northeast corner, and you can see a couple of barrels, and then the the light, the torch light. You couldn't really see anything else. And then on the left-hand side up here in the northwestern corner of this chamber, there is another chamber that you could see that there were some more stairs going down. But you don't know how far the stairs were going down. You could just tell that there were stairs there. I ask him if there's any kind of traps or areas we should avoid or secret tunnels or anything else he can tell us. Yeah, that's that's good. You know, the Nothic, he does tell you that he doesn't know of any traps because he does just stay here in the, in the cavern because he, he tells you that this is where he catches his food, any kind of rats. Uh, plus, you know, this is, this is where he lives and this is where he sleeps. And then he points over to this area to where there's another little small cave in the lower part of the crevice, and this is where he sleeps. But he does tell you that he does know that he has seen uh, when they pulled the dead man in here and threw him into the crevice and he when they had the the female his wife and the child he says that over against the wall there is a somewhere some type of secret lever that they actually pulled and you know he he actually he'll he'll walk you guys over here and show you but he says on this wall there is a secret door somewhere as to how the bad men access it, he doesn't know. But he says that there is a, uh, a door that's in that wall. So he does tell you that. Because that's actually the way that they came, because he thought that it was a dead end. But then afterwards, he went and checked it out, and the door was just starting to close as he rounded the corner. Interesting. Is there one that is clearly the leader? There is a man that walks around here with a staff and is in robes. Yes, he that's the one. He wields great magic. He always has light on the end of his staff when he walks through. But I, I don't want anything to do with him. I hide. Nothing, hide. What direction does he 
usually go where would we find him at if you had to guess all different directions he comes from all different directions okay anybody else got any questions or anything for this guy that we can get any information from him it seems like he's going to help us out as much as he can well I, I don't know that he can tell us anything more yeah, let's he, let's head down this way and uh, and try to find that uh, the the woodcutter's wife and children. Yeah, he definitely he definitely thanked you guys. That's Sounds good to me. I'll I'll start heading down this hallway. Very trying to be as quiet as I can. Okay, all right, everybody. Hope you guys had a good break. Get up and stretch and all that good stuff. Yep, ready to go. All That's right, it. cool. All right, so you guys were talking about you wanted to uh, go down this southwestern corridor where there's stairs going down 10 feet and there's a door, and then it kind of wraps around as well. I guess that's the, the general consensus. That's, consensus that's where we were told the, uh, the woodcutter's wife went, so yep. that's where we're yeah. going. And then the north of uh, the, Antonio, Antonio Bandera said he'd go first, so we'll, uh, we'll send him nice. ahead of us. So the Nothic, he just kind of waves to everybody, and then he disappears around this pillar. I ask him really quick if he <laughs> minds watching guard for us, if he'd like watch our back from, you know, the other tunnels, and maybe give us a heads up if anybody else is coming. I'll try to contact you, but he doesn't know if his if his mental connection will reach that far, because he doesn't know how how big this place is. But he said that he will try, though. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. All right, yeah. Good idea. I like that. Good idea. He what? said he will try that. What should we call that thing? I was thinking Eileen. Irene? Irene? Sure. I, I don't think he cares what you I call him. <laughs> he called himself a Nothic. You'll get that after you've had a nail or two. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking down this hall, Francisek. Stairwell goes down. Stairs go down about 10 feet. Door on the left. Door made of wood. All right, uh, Devin, uh, you go on ahead. Oh, of course. Can I'm you see? Quite slippery. Not a thing. Oh, uh, okay. I'll cast light on my shield. And that should project down the hallway nice and nice for you. Sure. Okay, and I will try to stealth down the hallway. Okay. As you get down to the door, give me a give me a stealth check. And you can do that in the tower. That's one of the roles that I actually like to have in the tower. All right, very good. So you are down there. You think that you've been quite stealthy. You know, you've bragged about your, your proficiency with stealth. So you get down to the base of the stairs. You can see that there's another door to your right-hand side. As you kind of glance around the hall, you see another door. And then there's the door on your left as well. So two right. doors, one in front of you facing your token to the north and then the one right be on behind you on the on the southern wall. The dresser. And I'll hold up two point. fingers to Francisek and point ahead of me and thumb behind me. And I'd like to listen at the door behind me. I'm gonna do a cool light man. So what do you think? Do I hear anything from the door? Why don't you give me a perception check? I like that. A lot of a lot of rogues don't do that. I'm glad you're listening. Why don't you go ahead and give me a uh, a perception check? Actually, it give is, them a good one. Come on. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quiet. You don't hear anything. This one's empty. Hey, what do you guys see down here? 
She oh, failed his oh, perception sorry. check. <laughs> I should I should have given it to him anyway. I'll I'll let someone else hear it as well. I would also like to listen at this one as well. Okay. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Oh my gosh. Please roll them in the tower from now on. This is <laughs> terrible. I'm quite good at this. <laughs> I'm totally not saying anything either. Th this one's it's also quiet. empty. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, it's uh, it sounds quiet. Now, Francis, nice. like, why don't you? <laughs> oh my gosh, poor Devin. Why don't uh, Francis and Laddie? Why don't you guys give me perception checks as well? As you guys are going past the door, <laughs> nice Laddie. <laughs> So I'm I'm trying to mimic uh, I'm trying to mimic Devin. I put my head against the door. Yeah, that that's just nice. <laughs> yeah. The, you're putting your head against the wall and and you hear nothing. But yeah. Francisek, Francisek, the the ears that you have, you actually hear something behind the door. That's just after Devin said, "Up, oh, coast is clear." <laughs> you <laughs> behind, behind this door, you you hear some some commotion it, it's not like it's it is kind of a, a, a little a little weird sounding you can hear this gruff voice that's commanding someone and what what uh let's see uh what languages do you speak there for in a sec um i don't remember elvish common dwarvish and draconic <laughs> It's not on there, but this is just too funny. You understand this. This is in common. This, this has got to be in common. So, as you're as you're listening, you hear this gruffy voice, and he's and he's saying, "Okay, now, okay, lick the floor. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Lick the floor. That's right. Roll around. Oh yeah, roll around. Yeah, like a dog. Like a dog. Yeah, that's it. Just like that." Lick the floor again. There you go. And and <laughs> this is what you hear from behind the door. And you're um, just kind of looking. And, and Laddie, as as you're as you're now coming up and putting your ear your ear to the door too, you can just see the expression on Frantisek's face, and and you can hear this going on also. <laughs> okay, I think we can take them by surprise, but I don't want to go in first. Laddie, go through the door. Let's go. Okay. Let's do this. Hey, I'm wait. Where are the other guys? Wim is actually keeping an eye on the um, the cavern behind us. Where's Squall? I don't know. Wim, you're still in the cavern? Yep, I'm at the top of the stairs, kind of right outside the cavern. Okay. Well, I, have where... two, I have two tokens on here now. Squall's to the north, okay. Where's, where's Squall? What's he doing? All right, I'll I'll whisper back to Wim. Wim, we're going we're going in. What? Okay. Yeah. He leaves uh, another ration at the top here, <laughs> just in case. Okay. Man, Wim had two tokens on there. It got past me. Okay, so you're kicking in the door, right, lad? Oh, yeah. Uh, friend just wait, 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 no, 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 stop, stop, stop. No. Not ready. Wait. All right. Wait, I'll wait. <laughs> You don't you don't see or hear him. He's nowhere in sight. Wim. Wim, you can see him. Oh, I see. I I actually didn't see where he was. Okay. Yeah, Squall's okay, up on the Squall. north bridge. Squall. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it, little Squall. one. That's Come, it, Squall. little one. We're going. You just keep licking the floor and you just keep rolling like a dog. <clears throat> so wrong, Dave. <laughs> I think I've seen right. that movie. That's it. Lick it. Lick it. Just like that. There you go. I can't, That's I, what I you can't hear. take this anymore. All right, I'm busting in. All right, so you bust in the door, you kick in the door. Give me a strength check really quick. Just don't roll horrible, laddie, please. All right, so uh, you you kick open you the door. <laughs> so creepy. I'm, I'm so sorry. 
So as you kick in the door, you catch three bugbears and a goblin by surprise. Kranik, thank you so much for the follow. So as you kick in this door, you know, there are, there is a, this goblin is down on the floor licking it. And he's rolling, he's like rolling around on the door. He's rolling around on the floor and he's licking the, he's licking the floor. So it was not, exi- it's not what you thought was going on in there. <laughs> but, but these three bugbears, they're basically just haggling this little, this little goblin around. Now, you know, that's what the goblinoids do. That's why goblins hate bugbears. And even though they're part of the same family, you know, they, they still hate them because of that stuff like this. So as you look inside of this and you're expecting, you know, probably the woodworker's wife or something yeah, like that in here. I figured that's fair, or the kid or something like that. So yeah, there's four roughly built wooden bunks and that, you know, there's all kinds of heaps of blankets and there's dirty dishes scattered about all over the place. You open the door. There's a very strong smell of unwashed bodies and rotten meat because you see bones and plates and stuff and just scraps all over. But these, uh, these bugbears, you know, they're kind of lounging and they're, and they're all standing there at the end of their beds, barking words at the sad little, at the sad little, uh, goblin. So you got them by surprise, and the goblin, as he as he s- suddenly stands up, he goes, ah! and he faints as he sees you, <laughs> as you bust in the door and you go in, the the, the goblin just absolutely faints and ah! and faints. So he's he's prone uh, and unconscious as he as he fainted, but the other the other uh, the other bugbears. They all grab their weapons and charge towards you. So you get, seeing that you, well, you've got them startled. So you get, everybody gets uh, an action right now. You guys can do your uh, actions right now. But the bugbears are going to grab their weapons as they have been startled by you guys. So, Laddie Bear, you're the first one in the door. You kicked it in. What are you doing as you take those guys by surprise? Yeah, so I, I kick in the door and I see one straight across from me, and I'm just gonna run and like tackle them into the wall. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, just you engage him, you move in, and you you just want to basically what do you what do you, you want to do? Grapple him? Yeah, I or grapple just him. okay. All right. So we'll do your strength versus a strength or dex of the bugbear, whatever is greater. So you is can it athletics or just strength. Uh, it would just be a strength check. So we'll just do that out in the open. Oh. Uh, they've uh, actually got a pretty good... Uh, yeah, uh, this 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 bugbear, he's as big as you are now, Lattith. And as you go to grab him, just the stench of this bugbear has just totally almost made you throw up. And his strength, Whoa. just the raw power of this bugbear, pushes you back to where you're at. So, okay. uh, now that's your action. Do you want to do anything for like a bonus action or do you want to take any other movement? Cause I'd love to uh, give you a tax of opportunity. I, I know you would. No, I'm, I'm not going to do anything else. Uh, I'm going to stick right here. Okay. Sounds good. So the little, you hear the little goblin, he's unconscious and he's prone. Unbelievable. That little poor little guy. He, he's licking the floor and rolling around like a dog. And then he faints when he sees you. So next in line is Francis. What would you like to do? Are these guys wearing uh, metal armor? Uh, these guys here, the bugbears are wearing like a, like a leatherish, like a leather hide type of armor. Okay. And they're they're picking up their shields and their their weapons now, which are morning stars. And so then you I'm see there's move. like a weapon rack of javelins and stuff there. So I'm going to move to where I've got vision on the bugbear there to the west, but I'm not blocking the door. So I'm just going to you know take a five foot step. Yeah. So and then I'm going right to uh, cast sacred flame on uh, on the bugbear. Okay, on Bugbear 1, sure, go for it. Call from the powers of your DD. The Bugbear fails his dexterity. Yeah, nice fail on the save. So you may go ahead and do damage. Wow, nice Ooh, damage. Nice. So okay. you, you smite him for 7 radiant damage as the hammer strikes down through the ceiling and hits him and explodes on him. Nice and Frantisek uh, shouts out, Feel the wrath of the Morning Lord! 
and then uh, I'll, I'll get out of the way so I can my companions can get into the room. Um, sure. Yeah, well, they can the they can move yeah. through you anyway. It just costs. I I know, but I would room. I would like them to have plenty of room. That sounds good. How about uh, let's see. <laughs> Welcome to the party, there, Devin. What would you like to do? Um, I'd like to step just into the room and attack with the rapier on the bugbear right beside Lady. Sure. All right, you go into the room. I'm going to unlock the tokens now. So, All right, you move in. Uh, your companion is engaged with the bugbear, so you can get sneak attack and all that good stuff. All right, so you hit with a 17. Now, do you have... Do you have a sneak attack on your on your sheet, Devin? I do. You do. Wow, you're totally going. On. All right, go ahead and add your sneak attack to your uh, damage, and let's see what you do. Wow, you do a total of twelve piercing damage from the rapier to the bugbear. He's heavily wounded now, as both you and, and uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. And with my bonus action, I'd like to use um, the. Skedaddle back out. Cunning action? I room. gotcha. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like a true rogue. <laughs> I love it. No, what are you doing? No, you stay. <laughs> using okay. using a French. I've got this. As a Squall, shooter. where are you? <laughs> so give me a perception Wait, check. Here. Squall, give me a perception check. You can add plus, uh, plus five to the roll in the modifier box, Squall. Wim, you can hear this going on. So, Wim. It's your turn now. What would you like to do? I say, Squall, come. There's some fighting. <laughs> and I quickly run down the stairs. Oh, that's too good. All right, so you make it to the opening of the door, and you can see a couple of bugbears, and they are engaged and almost surrounding your companion. So your uh, what was uh, what was the <laughs> perception check for? <laughs> Squall. Oh, I thought you said to give me a. You wanted a perception check for me at plus five. Uh, no, that was for Squall. Oh yeah, Squall. I'm sorry. I'm totally sorry. Yeah, my bad. I, I'm so sorry. I was looking at the wrong icon. Yes. Uh, you know what? Even though you got a you got a plus nine, and even though you rolled a one, I'm going to say that you can hear your companions yelling for you down in the uh, the corridor. Because you've got such okay. a you've got such a great uh, you've got such a great uh, perception, so even though one is usually an automatic fail, you you can hear your companions. Is it my turn? Yes, it is. Yeah, but okay, you knew no. that they were going down there anyway. You know, you guys were talking about going down there and you know checking out where the wood woodcutter's wife was anyway. So okay, I'll dash down to here. Okay. And... Sounds good. Ready action? Well, no, dash would be my action, so I'm good. All right, let's roll initiative, everybody. Oh, man. Nice roll, Devin. Devin had a 20. You guys got inspiration too. So, Devin, the way the inspiration works is at the beginning of your game, you get an inspiration. And if uh, you sometimes I'll, I'll allow you to have more than one, but you need to use your inspiration because if you don't use them, you lose them. So, you, and then everything resets back to one for the next game. So, but sometimes I'll, I'll say that it'll carry over. So, but uh, okay. let's see. Devin, looks like you are first. Let's and I will, will repeat uh, my previous maneuver. Okay, sounds good. So it costs you 20 feet, so it costs 10 to go through Frantisek, 10 to go through uh, uh, Wim, so you're at 25 feet right now. 25 feet of movement that's been used because of the difficult terrain as you guys are shimming past each other and stuff. So you may not get you may not get to uh, get out of there this time, but you're a rogue. You you I mean you're you're dexterous. You can avoid blows, right? Um, we shall see. I imagine. <laughs> you now see a goblin that's kind of passed out on the on the floor. You attack the the bugbear. You hit, and you also get sneak attack again. Oh, 
Oh, Surprise. nice damage. Holy cow. 16 piercing damage. The Yeah, you skewer. You make a shish kebab out of this bugbear as he slides off the end of your rapier. And he is incapacitated and dead. Five feet of movement. Yep. Sounds good. Ooh, I'm nice. Yeah. Yeah, you're safe there. Very nice. So you killed that bugbear, man. You, you did a lot of damage those two attacks. So let's go to uh, Squall. You are up. So it's double. It counts double. So to move through somebody, so that would be 5, mm -hmm. 10, 15, 25. So I could get into the room here. Yep. You could get five, to 10, 5, 10, 15, 15 25, 25, and 30. Yep, 30. 30. That's it. Yep. Okay. I will use my bonus action and cast Hunter's Mark on Mosk. Is nice. that what he is? Yeah. That's your okay. bonus action. There you go. And I will fire my longbow at him. Very nice. 13 <clears throat> is a miss as the arrow strikes the, the bunk bed that he's standing right next to. And the arrow sticks in. Bang! That's it for me. All right, we've gone to... Now the bugbears are up. So the bugbear that is engaged with you, uh, Ladith, he does have his morning star pulled out by this point. He does pick up the shield, and he swings at you. And he says, I'll be making you roll around on the ground and lick the floor next. <laughs> so he swings, uh, and he misses with a 13. All right, the goblin is unconscious, and you notice that he's in a fetal position, and you can hear him literally sucking on his thumb. L Laddie, you're up. Oh, Laddie, Druid. All right, uh, I will... I will scooch on over right okay. there, and I'll swing at the one that just swung at me. Okay, sounds good. Attacking bugbear number two with a 14. He basically takes his shield and just smashes your weapon away. And he says, he just winks at you. And he says, I told you. <laughs> All right, so we have this bugbear. Oh. He is dead. So if you move through his space, that will be an extra five feet of movement, just like moving through your companions. So we have uh, the other bugbear, which his name is Mosk. And he has his morning star, his shield, and he engages Laddie. So Laddie, he swings at you with his morning star, and he hits with a 19. Uh oh. He's, oh, he oh, smashes wow. you for max damage <laughs> max of 18. Damage. Oh, wow. That's ridiculous. One hit. <laughs> And Laddie Bear goes down unconscious and is gone to death saving throws. Uh, and both of the, the, the bugbear says to Mosk, Good job, Mosk. It looks like don't hit him again because we're going to need him to clean these floors. <laughs> <laughs> nice job with Mosk. Holy cow. Okay, so Frantisac, you hear a blood curdling screech. <laughs> oh, that wussy druid just dropped at that. <laughs> so I will, uh, I will send my bird, Dawnbringer, to deliver a touch spell for me. <laughs> and he will fly in, touch Laddie Bear, and deliver a cure wounds for me. Sounds good. That's a great idea, man. You are utilizing your familiar very nicely. So oh, we'll get my to, God. Uh, Come on. There we go. <laughs> Well, at least, at least, oh, old laddie, you're not. Uh, yeah, you're not. You're you're still prone. I mean, you're up. You're up. I mean, you're not going to die. So, um, are you Dawn tempting Bringer the dungeon has... master? No, 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 no. no. Uh, okay, I'm just okay. saying, like, just, right now, he's not going to die. <laughs> so, I, I've got 120 feet of movement, so he's got no problem getting back to me and perching on my shield, and that'll be it for my turn. So, Laddie, let's see, you took a... So, you're at 13 wounds, you got four hit points, you're still on the ground prone, so let me put yep. a prone on you. Okay, so we're down at uh, the, uh, the bottom of the... Man, whim. Not a good roll, bud. But you're up, and you see all this yeah, going on, bad. so uh, what uh, what would you like to do? 
Well, I'm going to go in with both my Tonfa and my red brand sword. 